Hi guys, Aiden here from XM2. We've been getting a lot of questions about the Tango and the different setups and variations that are available. So I'm just here today to take you through a bunch of the different stuff and show you what actually comes with the kit and then walk you through some of the features. Uh, I'm just gonna talk, start off with the actual case. So it comes with a travel case, which we custom make. It stays under 32 kilos or 70 pounds, which allows you to fly on any commercial airline. It allows a drone to be pulled out of that case and within a few minutes, you can have it assembled, ready to fly. If I just start now walking around, and I'm just gonna take you through some of the things. So first thing that's just right next to me here is the retracts. These are dual leg retracts, which are really strong and sturdy, and especially great when you're flying at the heavier weights that the Tango can handle. This is a really cool setup. We've been using it for a long time. It's really reliable, and not to mention the cool factor on set when the retracts go up just after you take off. It's really awesome. And we get a lot of comments about it. Uh, the other part that we use, a big part of this drone obviously, is the flight controller system we use. Now this is the, we're using the DJI A3 Pro system, which is a triple redundant system. Now, why we love this is obviously it's got your three GPSs and it's also internally got three different IMUs and it will switch to each of those if there's got a problem in the IMU or the electronic side of things. Now, we've been using this system for a number of years now and we found it to be really, really reliable. They fly the drone really well. For those that are familiar with like an Inspire 2, for example, this drone actually feels a lot like that in flying. So if you're thinking of moving up from an Inspire 2 into a larger machine, this is a really great option because you'll be really familiar with it from the get-go and that learning curve of going to a bigger machine just won't be there. It'll be really familiar and easy to use. Uh, moving on from that, what's connected to the A3 is actually the Lightbridge 2 controller. Now, we use this for multiple reasons. The main one is it obviously speaks really well with the A3 flight controller. So on here, you can obviously have your iPad or your iPhone similar to Inspire, and that gives you all sorts of telemetry about the aircraft with a very familiar feel again um, for GPS, battery voltage. Uh, you can actually see your video, uh, all sorts of different things on there, speed, height, um, yeah, all the information that you're used to getting on your US drones. So that brings us to the next bit. We also have the telemetry on top of here. This is a standalone system which we include with the drones. Uh, the reason we have this is it gives you really accurate figures about the current status of the drone. Now, uh, what the things that it actually measures are amperage, so how many amps is the system's currently pulling the voltage and how many milliamps you've used out of the batteries as well. So it's a really good indication of your battery health. And also because of the varying payloads that you can run on the Tango uh, with different weights, that varies a lot to the amount of flight time. So a good way to actually track that is to actually view how many milliamps you've used out of your battery so you can see exactly what's left, maximizing each time you use it, which is a lot safer. It also can display your amperage, so what that is also handy for is one, it gives you sort of a normal setup that you can see. So if you get high amps all of a sudden, it might be an indication of something's wrong with the system or that you're overloading the system, you might have too much weight on there. So it's something you can track yourself and you'll get to know your machine really well that way. Uh, the other really cool thing about this drone, which is linked into our telemetry, is that we have actually um, built our own power distribution board. I'm gonna grab that here. So this is actually what it looks like inside the drone in the centerpiece here. The reason it's centered out here is we have the actual vibration dampener go through the middle, but this is uh, designed so that it's really easy to use on the drone and maintain it. We've built in our own current sensors on here, which feed into the telemetry system. Uh, we have all the terminals going, which are screw terminals and the signal terminals on the top. Now we've got the two boards which are actually separated. So if there's a problem with one, then you've got a sort of redundant system. Um, which is really nice. And then the other thing which it's worth mentioning now is the propulsion system actually has a redundant signal system so that if there's a problem with one of those small servo wires, it actually has a redundant system to jump over to again. So another safety feature that's built into this drone. Just moving along now, we'll have a look at uh, the battery trays. So we're using a toad and a hole system on the battery tray. Uh, you know, you can clip that on really quickly. It's a quick release system. So you just Release it, quick release, push the two buttons on the side to release, lift off, and then you have your batteries on here. The battery tray can handle two or four batteries, depending on what you want, um, in terms of what payload you're allowed to carry or what weight you're allowed to run your drone at. So it's as easy as clipping it back on and locking the, 
the slider across. So nice and quick and easy. You can have multiple battery trays on set with your batteries pre-set up in there. And then you can just clip them on and off and there's a really quick battery change. In terms of vibration dampening, we're actually using uh, a wire dampening system which we created. Now this is really easy to tune as well, but we've created this so that it fits a wide variety out of the box of cinema payloads from sort of your lighter Movi Pro packages up to your really heavy Ronin 2 packages with big cameras and lenses. So it fits a really wide variety of cameras, really stable and we can tune that if you need to go as well. Moving on now, I'm going to talk about the toolless quick release arms. Now these are this system up here. It's as simple as it comes out of the box in this sort of uh, configuration. When you want to assemble the drone, you literally just pull the arm up. You'll hear it click into place and it's ready to go. So unfold the propellers and off you go. So that's now locked in there. To release it again, it's toolless again. You just need to push the mechanism in. You hear the lock out and then the arm will fold back down. We've been using these drones on sets around the world with all our pilots for a very long time now. We've got hundreds and hundreds of hours of actual flight time on them and they've been extremely reliable in a huge variety of conditions. Let's talk a little bit about the propulsion system. This is a tuned propulsion system and it works really well with the A3. Uh, on here we have a sine wave speed controller matched with a really high efficiency motor and carbon infused propellers. Now, it's a very efficient setup considering the weight that this thing can carry. And you'll be amazed at how quiet this thing actually is for the weight that it's carrying. We've had similar drones in the past where we're carrying similar weights and you know they must be almost double the volume in terms of the decibel reading. So really quiet, great on set, makes everyone feel really comfortable and it makes it feel like this thing's doing it in ease and it really is doing it with ease. I think a lot of you will be familiar with the A3 and the, the Inspire setups where you have your GPS, sport mode and addy which have available on this one and you know with this propulsion system you actually can get this drone up to speeds of 75 kilometers an hour or 45 miles per hour with ease we've tested that um, i'm sure some people will be able to get it faster uh, but really agile we're having a really locked in feel and even at the heavier weights and even at the lighter weights so a really great platform is the fpv camera this is a little run cam FPV camera, very popular in the FPV world. Now we put that on for a couple of reasons. One is that it's extremely good in different light conditions. So it will adjust itself really quickly. So if you're flying in a dusk or early in the morning and the sun pops up, it's gonna to adjust to that really easily and make it really easy to see on a screen. The latency is really low. Uh, so when you're viewing it on your iPad through the light bridge, uh, you'll find that you've, it's quite easy to pilot from that camera as well. Uh, Moving on from there, uh, we're also using the 150 amp anti-spark plugs on the rear here. Uh, they're really great plugs. They're really easy to plug in and pull out while maintaining a really strong uh, contact point. And you know, we've been using those for a long time as well. We sell those as a separate part if you want to put them on your batteries. We can also put different plugs on here. We need to speak to you about what you want to use to make sure that they can handle the amperage that this machine can pull. One thing I wanted to take you guys over is just the different uh, standoffs that are available within this or come with the standard kits, I should say. So uh, there's two different lengths, as you can see here. One's got a um, toad in the hole mount on it. And one's got the standard Ronin quick release. And you can see here that there's two different lengths. So, you know, they are made this way to essentially ensure that the, each camera system sits at the lens level is about the same off the ground, so you've got enough clearance, but while keeping the distance from the repellers. Now, uh, obviously the Ronin 2 is a longer gimbal, so it sits a bit lower, and so we've got the shorter standoff for that. And the Movi Pros have got a, are a bit shorter, so we've got a longer standoff for that to keep it down nice and low. Um, we can buy these as separate options. If you want to have the option to run both gimbals, we do that often, and it is really handy. So you can get both of these and run it any way you want. We also include with the Tango an SDI to HDMI converter. Now, this is used so that we convert a SDI signal into a HDMI signal, which the Lightbridge 2 can accept. Now, that means you can view your video from your camera directly on your iPad, so you can eliminate the need for a separate HD video system. To top it all off with the features, is a really big one, is that you can actually go to under, from underslung to overslung on this craft really easily. 
It's a quick change. We have the low GPS stands to allow for it, so you have no hindrance. It's literally clip on and clip off for a Movi. With a Ronin 2, you actually just have to change the mount from the top bottom to the top, which only takes a few minutes with a few screws. So it's a nice and quick process and allows for some really amazing shots in a really short amount of time. The Tango has a really wide variety of payload and battery combinations that you can run. Now, this can be a little bit confusing and we're trying to simplify that a lot, but at the same time, we're doing this to allow you to have the best possible setup for your particular camera. So, when I say you can run different battery combinations, we choose to either run a combination of two or four batteries. Um, you can run as low as two 6S 10,000s all the way up to say four 6S 22,000s or you know you can run even bigger two 30,000 milliamp batteries. Now uh, we've created a tool online for you which allows you to have a play with these different payloads and battery combinations to find that what best suits you. Important thing to note about the Tangos, when you purchase them and you select which gimbal you want to use it with, we actually supply all the components that you need for it to adapt to that gimbal. So you don't need to buy anything extra to get the full capability out of using that particular gimbal. The Tango comes in two different versions, the Tango and the Tango Lite. Now the Tango is designed to be flown up to a maximum takeoff weight of 36 kilograms or 79 pounds and the Tango Light is designed to be flown at 55 pounds or 25 kilograms. The main differences between the two is that the Tango comes with retracts and the Tango Light does not come with retracts and it uses the gimbal landing legs that come with some of the Mad Factories and we make the Ronin 2 ones for you. So let's take a look at those now. So Tango Light. This is the setup so you can run on the Tango Light. Uh, you actually remove the retracts as we suggested before and in place of that, you run these landing gear which attach directly to the gimbals. Now, you sacrifice the retracts in order to be able to carry a heavier camera package and get or get longer flight times or both. So, you have two options here. When you buy the Tango Light, you can get the Ronin 2 package or you can get the Movi Pro. Now, when you buy the, either of those, it comes with all the accessories to be able to adapt these gimbals so you don't need to buy anything else. But when you get the Ronin 2, it includes the Ronin 2 landing gear which you see here and all the parts to install this on your Ronin 2. For the Movi Pro, you actually have to purchase these separately or as an optional part. So we can, we can sell these to you or you can buy these directly off Freefly, or you might already have them. Now I'm gonna take you guys through a comparison between the Movi Pro and the Ronin 2. I'm just gonna show you how quickly it is to set up the Tango. So it comes out of the box, flip the arms up, lock them into place. And then I'm gonna get Luke to come in, and clip in my gimbal. Quick release and on. So there we go, as easy as that. And we're pretty much ready to fly once we plug the batteries in. So this is the Tango with the Movi Pro. Uh, we've got the, a longer standoff, which we showed before, which gets the Movi Pro a little bit lower. And then also it comes with a toad and a hole on the mount here. In terms of actually using the Movi Pro on the Tango, you do lose the functionality of being able to run the camera directly into the light bridge, unless you're willing to have a cable hang out from the camera up to here, which will restrict your movement eventually on the pan. So that's one limitation of the Movi. However, it's really great because you can use all the other Movi's really good features and the whole ecosystem that comes with Movi. It is very light, so you're gonna get longer flight times with the Movi compared to the Ronin. And, but you can only run slightly smaller camera packages as well. Another great feature about having the Movi Pro on the Tango is because we use the toad in a hole on the top and the bottom, it's really easy for us to change from this underslung mode to overslung mode. So I can quickly show you now how quick and easy it actually is. It's a little bit high for me to be doing this, but we usually would have it on the ground so it's a bit easier. So batteries come off, gimbal comes off. We'll flip the gimbal over so that it can go into overslung mode. Clip it onto the top. Tighten the quick release. Plug in the batteries on the same tray. Tighten the quick release. And then our battery wires come down here as well as on the top. So it's really quick and easy. Off you go. You've changed from underslung to overslung in less than a minute. Ronin 2 and the Tango. So we recommend the Ronin 2 with the Tango. It's a really great setup 
for a multitude of reasons. Now, first one is we actually sell their Tango when you select a Ronin 2 with all the parts you need to actually adapt it to the top and make use of all the features. Um, we have a, a shorter standoff on the top here which keeps the camera off the ground with enough clearance while still giving the lens nice and low at the perfect height. Um, we have a connector cable that comes out of the drone and plugs into the Ronin which allows you to do two main things. One, you can have a single person operation which is really cool like an Inspire one where you control the tilt of the actual camera via this slider here on the top of the controller or you can run dual controller like an Inspire 2. We have a second Lightbridge 2 controller as the slave, which lets a camera operator operate the controller via Lightbridge 2. Really cool. Now, the other thing which is really great with the Ronin is it has slip rings inbuilt into the, the uh, actual gimbal itself. Now, if you don't know what a slip ring is, all that means is that you can take an SDI signal out of your camera, such as an Alexa Mini like this, run it through the gimbal, it comes up through the gimbal through here up to this top section and then there's an SDI output out here. Now, on our aircraft we have a SDI to HDMI converter. Now, what that allows you to do is take this SDI signal, plug it into the converter, the converter then is connected to the Lightbridge 2. Now the Lightbridge 2 will then allow you to display your camera view on your iPad or your phone so you can see the camera, what the camera is viewing, not just the FPV camera, what the camera is viewing on your screen in front of you. So really cool. You can run that as a single all the dual setup. One of the other features that comes standard on all our Tango kits, including the lights, is the uh, Teradek or HD video mount. Now this is a small mount that sits underneath the aircraft here and you can attach the Teradek mount via a quarter inch screw you screw it in the back here and it's attached really firmly with a metal mount that attaches to the frame. Now, the reason we have this up here when you use it with the Ronin 2, like I said before, with the SDI through the system, you can actually feed SDI directly into this, straight out of this, and then back into your light bridge. So you can have the best of both worlds. You can have your full HD from a Teradek system going to Video Village or whatever, and then in your own system in front of you, you can still view what the camera is viewing but through the Lightbridge system. So it's very light, very mobile. You don't have to carry around anything else than this. If you have the Teradek or a similar, you still have to carry around a receiver or whatever else it is and another screen to be able to view that. So really nice, neat little setup and a great way to get both of those things in. You can also run this receiver on the gimbal as well. Sorry, transmitter on the gimbal as well. So you can feed it in and out here, then put the SDI back into uh, the gimbal, run it back up to the Lightbridge. So what you're looking at here, guys, this camera package at the moment is around 13 kilos or 28 pounds. Uh, this, with this setup here, and you can run, say, four 16,000 milliamp batteries, still allows you to keep the weight below the maximum 36 kilo takeoff weight, and still, while still providing you with almost 15 minutes flight time at that payload. So really fantastic flight times with such a big camera and it'll do it with ease and still fly up to 75 kilometers or 45 miles per hour. Uh, there was one little disadvantage when running this setup. Uh, so when you wanna go from camera underslung to overslung on top, it does require you to do a few screws on the actual mount here to move it from the bottom to the top. We did this just before to change from the Mobi Pro to the Ronin 2 and it only took us a few minutes. So it's a very quick process, but it does require a little bit more time so it's not instantaneous, it will just take sort of five minutes to get yourself sorted out. This is the Tango Lite with the Mobi Pro. We created this version to allow for the maximum payload capability while being able to remain under 55 pounds or 25 kilograms. A couple of quick things about running this setup which I want you to know about. So when you're running this setup, obviously you don't have retrack. So when you're taking off and landing, the gimbal has to be put into what they call landing mode. So that means it sort of stalls the motors and it won't have any movement and it just sort of locks the gimbal in place. So when you land, the aircraft just stays stationary. If you have the gimbal armed while it's still on, once the aircraft lands, it'll begin to spin because there's no resistance on the yaw motor. Here we have the Tango Light with the Ronin 2. This is a great setup because of some of the functionality you can get. You do pay a little bit of a price in terms of weight capability because the Ronin 2 is much heavier than a Mobi Pro, but Still a great option and it comes with our 
Ronin 2 landing gear as well, which you can see here, which allow you to use it without the retracts on the Tango Lite. So, a few of the cool things I spoke about before, but I'll just reiterate them on this one. We have a cable that comes down from the main aircraft, which allows you to use a second light bridge controller. Um, we can also take the SDI signal out and put it into the SDI converter on the aircraft and convert it to HDMI signal so that you can see this camera that's on the gimbal on your controller, on your iPad, or your phone, or your Android device. Uh, obviously with the Ronin, you can carry a little bit more weight, but for running it as a light version, you are limited if you're gonna try and get it under 55 pounds or 25 kilograms. The light version is capable of going up to 32 kilograms maximum takeoff weight, so there's plenty of headroom there to be able to fly bigger camera packages if you need, but when you need to go a little bit lighter, you also have this option here. Um, also to save weight, we tend to use one Ronin battery at a time rather than the two. Um, it can save quite a significant amount of weight just on that, and then you can just hot swap them one or the other as you needed. Uh, the other cool thing, which I also spoke about before, but again, I'll reiterate this, is when you go SDI out, you can run the Teradek or something similar uh, on the Teradek mount, which we have included in all our aircraft by a quarter inch screw on the back here. And you can mount that here and have the antennas pop down and just have the SDI running through that, then back out to the light bridge as well. One of the disadvantages of running the Ronin to, say compared to Moby Pro, is that they were never really designed to work in this manner with the landing gear like this. So we do have a workaround which we can supply, uh, supply you once you purchase it. Essentially what it means is when you are about to land the aircraft, you do have to disarm the yaw motor completely. So what happens is when you're, just before you land, you've got to change a profile, which is easy, just by a flick of a switch. And then what that does is it actually turns this motor off the yaw. The roll and tilt still stay on, but they're in a reset, like a stowed mode. But this is now free, so it means once you land, aircraft is free to move like this. Now, where we've run into a few problems with this is if it's really windy and the aircraft's on, not on a perfectly flat surface, the wind can tend to, before you take off, just slightly yaw the aircraft. Now, the A3 really does not like this movement when you're about to take off. So before you take off, you have to make sure the aircraft is still in one position arm the motors, once you've armed, you can just take off and do as you want and then you can arm the gimbal once you're in the air. But this is an important thing to note because it does make a difference the way you operate every day. If you have the retracts on the standard Tango, you don't have to worry about it at all. It can stay armed at all times. The Tango Lite with the Ronin 2 is not the ideal setup for keeping under 55 pounds and 25 kilos because it does limit the camera that you can hold on here. With a camera of this size and lens, you're not gonna be able to get under 55 pounds you have to run something a lot smaller in terms of the lens and probably less lens control. So something like a CP2 with maybe a focus motor on there would be your maximum weight. Um, but you can look up some more specifics on your camera packages and compare it to our flight time and weight chart that we have online, which you can access. If you're really looking to maximize the size of the camera and the weight that you can carry as a payload on the Tango Lite, so keeping it under 55 pounds, I would recommend running the Movi Pro as it's just so much lighter than the Ronin 2. I think there's quite a lot of you that have followed our journey and you've seen that we've flown a lot of different aircraft over the years that we've been operating. We are really proud of this aircraft and that's the reason we've released it to everyone. Uh, it's taken us a long time to get to this form factor and this ease of use and this efficiency with these big camera packages. We're really excited to have this on the market and share what we've been using with others. There's quite a few out there already and everyone's been really happy with the way they're working. It never stops going and I hope to share that with you guys. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this has been a really informative video and it's answered a bunch of your Tango questions. If you uh, want to see a demo of the product, we have offices in LA and Melbourne. We're going to be at a couple of expos this year, so send us an email or a comment if you have any questions and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.